You are now listening to the Empowered Podcast. I'll be your host, JB Hawkins. I'm a real estate agent with EXP out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I've been in the industry for over 15 years. I've decided to turn my attention away from production and focus on agent development. I hope you enjoy the show. Good morning, everyone. It is a nice snowy day here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and today we have Casey Kim uh, with EXP Realty. How are you, Casey? I'm good, JB. Thanks for having me on your podcast this morning. It is cold. It is freezing. I cannot believe how much snow we're getting. Like, I did not expect to wake up with that. They're always wrong on the news. Right. (laughs) Welcome to Oklahoma. Yeah. So guys, a little bit about Casey is one, he is one of my dearest friends. We've been friends for a couple of years now. Um, He's also one of my funniest friends. (laughs) So we have a lot to unpack today. Casey is a top agent and I've had uh, the pleasure of having kind of a backseat to his business. We're we're together a lot. We travel a lot. And so I kind of get some insight into that. And so naturally, of course, I would have him on the show. So again, thank you so much for being here. Let's get into it. We've got a lot to get covered today. Um, so how long have you been in, in real estate? Let's start there. I've been in real estate for about six years now. Okay. And before that, I know that you were in a completely different industry. A yeah. fun fact about Casey is he has all of this amazing knowledge about food and yes. flowers. Yes. Especially cheese. So kind of tell everybody about kind of your background and then how you transitioned into real estate. Absolutely. So during college, I realized that I could wait tables and walk out, you know, four or five hours with some cash. Um, I started off with, you know, working at a chain restaurant. And then shortly thereafter, I realized that I could, you know, up the price of those tickets and make more money. And so I started working in a fancy steak restaurant. Yes. Casey, if you ever go out to eat with him, he like knows what to order, all these sauces. And I don't even know. I don't even know what it is. But he knows. And he, like I said, he's got this uh, profound knowledge of cheese. I don't know where that came from, but it's very interesting. I do like cheeses. (laughs) So tell me all the, you know, you gave me the list of cheeses one time, like, You've got to try this cheese and this cheese. I like my, you know, cheddar cheeses. I like brie. Uh, Manchego is my favorite cheese. Um, I'm kind of past the basic, you know, craft cheese that you can see (laughs) get at the store. I love those. There's a time and place, but oftentimes I do like a good cheese. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) So, so you, you know, you were in the restaurant industry. You learn, I know that you learned a ton of skills just from being in that industry for so long. How do you feel like that that's really played into, you know, having a really successful real estate career? I feel like because um, I'm a little bit particular about things, um, I can kind of translate that to my, you know, clients. Uh, working in the restaurant business, you have to kind of adapt. Every day, um, every hour, you know, your customers and your clients are all very different. Some are laid back, some are not. um, And you have to anticipate their needs. And, you know, being on your toes and thinking on your toes a lot, I think is very, very um, helpful whenever you're with clients because you've got to be on the ball. You've got to know your product. Right. So, uh, yeah, I know you were very successful in the career uh, before real estate. Why real estate? What, What made you think of that? Well, as a first generation um, Korean American, I was always stuck in the middle between my parents and, you know, whoever what they were dealing with. Oftentimes it was real estate, you know, whether it be commercial um, lending or, you know, just or I'm sorry, residential or just like uh, leases. And um, I was stuck in the middle. You know, I was, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old translating for my parents. And I found out that, you know, it was very, very natural 
um, as a realtor, we're explaining, we're educating, um, we're telling people what the process is. And I've always wanted to do it. And there was a time and place and six years ago it happened. That's awesome. Well, I've known you for three of those and you have killed it in real estate. Your production has gone up every year. Uh, you know, I don't really specialize in luxury, but you have done a lot of luxury real estate. And I love kind of being behind the scenes of that and, and watching you. Um, you really are so good at catering to those clients and, you know, making them feel special. That's one thing that I really noticed about you is you know how to make people feel special. I try. I, try. I, I, I do love that. Um, so, so you, you got your real estate license. Let's kind of get into the meat and potatoes of this. A lot of people are watching their newer agents or maybe they're at a certain production level and they want to do more. So that's right. kind of the premise of this podcast is, you know, what are top agents doing to get the business, to maintain the business? So what are some of your tips and secrets that you're, that you're doing? Well, I feel like um, once you're in the business, you get very busy, you get overwhelmed, time just flies by, you kind of forget about the basics. And some of those basics are always maintaining your relationships, letting everyone know that you are in fact a realtor all the time, whether it be social media, out and about. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I did the first two years when I um, became an agent was I wore my name tag upside down. And that way, you know, when I'm out and about, although I may have forgotten about it, if it's upside down, people are more likely to come up to you and say, sir, your name tag. Oh, OK. Well, thanks. You know, it's a great way to kind of introduce yourself to people that you normally wouldn't. Right. Right. OK. So, you know, make sure that you are out and about letting everybody know that you're a realtor. I love the name tag idea. That's you guys should use that. Uh what are some other things that you've done? I, I personally know that you are really good at building and cultivating relationships with, with people. You are a referral machine. Uh, and so I try, be, I try to be, I think relationships are very, very important. Growing up, my parents always said, it's always good to know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're, when you're in your teens and you're growing up, you don't really think about that. But it's very, very true. The more relationships you have, you know, you nurture and you cultivate, I think that will bring a lot of success. People will want to work with you. Not only do you have to maintain those relationships and form them, but I think it's important that you um, are, are very, very generous in your kindness and your compassion and mm -hmm. treat people the way that you want to be treated. Yes. I agree with that. You know, I, in, in real estate transactions, a lot of times it's not fun. You know, there, you've got, you know, anxieties high, the buyers are worried, there's inspections, there's all these different things that have to happen throughout a transaction. And it's really our job as agents to kind of guide them and reassure them and let them know the next steps. And I feel like you're really good at that. I've heard you on the phone. Uh, you know, you're very good at doing that. So again, I, I try to be, you know, um, before I was in the restaurant or I'm sorry, after I was in the restaurant industry, I worked here in Tulsa at the at t call center in Katusa. Mm -hmm. I worked there for quite some time. And literally I was on the phone eight hours a day with the headset on. And every time, you know, someone would hang up, there'd be another beep and I'd get another phone call. I despised the job. I hated wow. it. But in hindsight, it taught me quite a bit. It taught me to deal with people who were upset, angry, um, irritated. It mm -hmm. taught me to calm them down. It, ca it taught me to listen to them and not just listen, but actively listen, listen to right. what they're really saying. And I think that's very, very important in real estate because um, a lot of what we do is communication. Absolutely. I heard it put this way. I just came back from a real estate conference. I heard it put this, this way last week. God gave us one mouth and two ears for a reason. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yep. So sometimes you just have to stop and really listen 
where that frustration is coming from um, and, you know, try to help them solve the problem. Right. So, okay. So make sure that you're out there, you're, you're giving your card. I know that you and I have had conversations about that. Talk yep. a little bit about that, about, first of all, Casey has the bougiest cards of any realtor that I know. They're not that bougie. <laughs> They're not that bougie. Maybe they, they are, are a little bougie. Super bougie, <laughs> but I love them. Uh, so, you know, tell agents a little bit about that, how you how you do that. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> how you, you know, you're really good at giving your cards to everyone. I mean, everyone. We'll be at the grocery store. We'll be at a restaurant. And he's, he's always has a conversation with people like, Hey, my name is Casey Kim. Here's my card. So yeah. I think that's great practice. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So I've always got business cards in my car. Always. I don't care. I mean, like in, if I get out of the car, I've always got them in my pocket, especially if I know that I'm going to an event or a place where I don't know people, I always make sure and hand them the card. Um, yes. I think it's very important, you know, and now in today's, you know, day of like text, text messages and phones and whatnot, a card is something that's tangible. Right. You know, and right. it's something that they can put in their pocket and they'll remember, especially if it's bougie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bougie so you guys go get some bougie cards. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing that I want to say. Make sure you stand out from the crowd. We have, I think, over 7,000 agents in the Northeast Oklahoma area that are licensed. If you want to stand out um, among those, make sure that everything about you kind of stands out. Make sure that you make an impression. Look people in the eye. Introduce yourself. You know, um, have people drawn to you by being super nice, engaging. And again, just reminding people you're an agent. Absolutely. And so that, that kind of brings up my next thing about Casey that I love. Um, this sweater right here is because of Casey Kim. Um, he, is, <laughs> he is very um, particular about how he shows up anywhere. Um, he, he, he's a sharp dresser. So, you know, you, that, that's a big thing that you believe in. Like you've got to look the part, you've got to play the part, um, yes. especially when you're starting out because you want to make the impression, correct? Absolutely. I am a very, very strong believer in that if you look good, you feel good, and then you do good. There right. is a very, very big difference in wearing something very casual and going out to work. You carry yourself differently. I feel like your mentality is very different. I've got a funny story where um, I was, you know, I was dressed the way I normally dress out and about working. I went to a bank and um, I didn't know anyone there. It's not my bank, but I went to the bank and I heard a conversation with these, this couple next to me. And they were like, well, we need to check. We've got closing costs. And I was like, oh, they're buying a house. I right. congratulated them, of course, and said, hey, congratulations. That's a really great, you know. Um, achievement. They were like, thank you. They literally asked me for my business card, <laughs> even though they were closing on a house with their realtor, which I thought was a huge, you know, um, uh, compliment. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And the gentleman said, hey, you know what? I really like your swag. Can I have your business card? I was like, that's right. Me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You could have my business card. And of course, I have them in my jacket pocket. Yeah. So. Well, you never know who you're going to run into. Uh, and that's one lesson that I've taken from Casey. If you guys follow us on our Facebooks about a year ago. Uh, <laughs> what, do you, Casey, what do you want to say? <laughs> that you came to my closet and you were like, oh. no, no. <laughs> So he's he's one of my friends, but he also dubs as like my stylist. It's really great. <laughs> well, you guys, if you if you saw what I saw in this closet, oh boy, 
Well, we made sure that all of Facebook did. He he told me that my he had piled all these clothes. And granted, I hadn't worn a lot of these clothes in years. But you know how women, we keep the clothes and we're like, one day we're going to fit back into these. No, ma'am. No, <laughs> he was ma'am. like, thank the Lord, you did not. <laughs> so that was fun. But, but Casey, I, I love how you're always, uh, how sharp dressed you are and how you carry yourself. Thank you. I so appreciate it. You've helped me for sure. So we still so have a ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Casey Kim. <laughs> <Ta-da>! <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are some other things? I know that you've been like a rock star at getting listings. You've worked a little bit of luxury. You know, agents listening to this, I really want to be able to give them the meat and potatoes that they're going to be able to listen to this and you know, go back out and, and make some money, get some good ideas. So, so what are some other things that you do? So, you know, when I first started, um, it was very difficult, but when you're in put in those positions, you get creative. So I found out through the MLS, of course, that some listings expire, some get released. So I started reaching out to those people Yes. the day after it was released or expired. Yes. Got on the phone, talked to them and said, hey, let me go by your house. Let me see what I can improve on and let's get it back on the market. That became my bread and butter for quite some time. And then from there, it was word of mouth. It was referral and the business just kind of grew, but it wasn't easy. You have to work at it. And I think that's what thing that's what realtors don't realize. This job of showing homes I mean, it's really not just showing homes. Yeah. It is helping people trim down bushes, plant flowers, paint, clean. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've cleaned floors, toilets, kitchens. I mean, you do what you have to do. Showing That's homes right. is just a small part of what we do. That's right. You know, you and I have had personal conversations around the fact that a lot of new realtors get in. They're like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to be a realtor. My hours are going to be super flexible. I can kind of work when I want to. But in fact, for top producers, that's just the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. I I don't think there's one top producer that I've talked to that just like stepped one foot in. I mean, it is 40 hours plus a week. Yep. Yep drumming up business, building relationships. So talk a little bit about, you know, I know we've had conversations about that, but I want the other other people to hear. Absolutely. Um, like you just said, you know, agents who, who work hard, I mean, they reap the benefits. And when I say work hard, it's just not 40 hours a week. Sometimes I wish it was 40 hours a week where I could just start from eight o'clock and end at five and be done with it. I have had clients call and or text me at two o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning. Um, it, I mean, we are because of technology, email and text messages and this instant gratification mentality. Yeah. So many of us have. It is it's hard. It's 24 seven and you have to be on the ball. You have to respond. You have to um, update clients all the time. Um, it, it, we're, we're, we're slaves to our clients. Mm -hmm. Well, when they're buying a house, that's one of the major things a person does in their life. And it's, you know, we're not, they're not buying a couch. I mean, there's a lot of things that are involved. There's inspections, appraisals, you know, sometimes things go wrong and we've got to, we're we're basically putting out fires a lot of the time because when that client is, is worried or something's wrong or. You have to be there and be a good support and guide them and lead them. So, you know, I always say realtors really never take a vacation. We're just working from a different location. That's exactly. It. You'll never take a vacation. Which reminds I was telling another agent that, you know, we we went to Hawaii last year, JB and I and our, our good friends or whatever. We went to Hawaii and with um, the time difference, it's a five hour time difference. Literally, it's me, JB, and our good friend, Tiffany Johnson, who's another agent. We're up at three o'clock in the morning texting and calling and emailing our clients because three o'clock in the morning translates to eight o'clock Oklahoma time. Yes. 
So we're in bed, one eye open, just. Yeah. Okay, I'm not yet. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah. going to be fun. We're going to close, you know. <laughs> so yeah, like you said, we do just work in a different location and we really don't take vacations. That's right. I mean, we have to be accessible to our clients and it's always fun. So Casey and Tiffany have become like my travel buddies and we've gone on multiple vacations together. But it is hilarious to see three realtors <laughs> like, when we were in Park City and we were like getting off the lift and we're like, hold on, the appraiser's calling. <laughs> yep. I mean, this is our life right now. Yep. But, you know, I, I, I truly believe that all of us love our job. We love the fact that we have the opportunity to help people buy and sell real estate. And we know that's part of it. I mean, yep. Um, but in the beginning, you know, Casey said this, and I'll say it again, you have to treat it like a nine to five or nine to nine or whatever it takes. If you don't have clients, you're working, you're spending that time working to get clients. Yep. Exactly. Um, and you, if you plant enough seeds along the way, here we go. It's People are going to start showing up. You're going to start getting houses in contract, listings, all the things that we want to do as real estate agents. Exactly. And you're right. You, when you don't have clients in the very beginning, or even if you do have clients, I feel like all agents should really be studying the MLS, you know, the multi-list um, system. There are so many um, stats and figures and, you know, information in there that we need to know. I think it's important that as a good agent, we know our product. We know uh, the inventory that's out there. We know the terminology the contract, uh, deadlines, all of that information. Because like you said, these clients are, you know, they're they're counting on us to help them through the largest purchase of their life. Absolutely. And it's huge. Yeah. So I think I think that's great. And when Casey says the MLS, like if you're a brand new agent and you've <clears throat> never showed a home, get on MLS, take a friend with you, practice showing. Practice opening up the, the key box. Yep. Uh, practice running comps. And I know that the company that Casey and I are with, we we have a ton of mentorship. And so, you know, find a mentor. Find that top agent that you look up to or respect. Ask them for coffee. You know, ask them, I don't know how to do CMAs. What am I doing? You know, practice filling out a listing contract and a buying contract. So that when you do get the clients, you're very prepared. Exactly. Yeah. Preparation really is, it's key. Yes. It's key. And I've yes. said this before, but know your product, know the neighborhood, know the contract, know all of it. The more that you know, I mean, it sounds corny, you know, the more that you know, the better off you'll be. Um, whenever I waited tables, I knew every ingredient in every dish. I knew the special of the night. I knew my wines and eventually became kind of a wino. But uh, that's how I learned about cheeses. I knew about everything because so many people are, they're very, very particular. Me yes. and Yes. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> you particular? Really, baby? I know where you live. I know where you live. <laughs> I love it. Well, Casey, so... I know that you just recently moved to brokerages to EXP. You joined yep. me. Um, why did you move to EXP and what are some benefits that you think a new agent could benefit from? The reason why I moved to EXP was because it's all purely business. I wanted to keep more money for myself um, and my future and my family. I knew that with my last brokerage and many other traditional brokerages, I was paying the brokerage $18,000 for every $3 million of production I was doing. Last year, I did $8.2 million. So you guys can do the math. That's a lot of money. Yes. That I could have kept for myself, but I right. didn't. Right. And so in black and white, and because it's numbers and it's because it's business, I switched. Not only because of the finances, I knew that EXP offered so much training that was accessible to me 24 seven. 
Yes, Casey, I think that that's really the most understated thing that people talk about. You know, when you hear about EXP, it's, oh, you know, you, you have the, I don't even like to call it a commission split. I think it's more of a compensation plan. Yep. Or you hear about the, the agent attraction portion of it. Nobody talks about the training and that yep. they also give you leads. Exactly. So, so just for anybody wanting to know the training with EXP if you are an icon agent, which means that you've done a, a high level of production, I'll, I'll say the short, the short version, you've done a high level of production, you're obligated to teach a class in whatever your uh, niche is. So it could be open houses, it could be how I got, you know, I just watched a training, how I got 30 listings in 60 days in this market. There's a, an agent out of Orlando that taught that. But you're getting this high level training that you can watch the video, it's recorded, you can watch it as many times as you want, and you immediately can go back and implement it in your business. I think that that's where a lot of companies are falling short, Yep, is the tactical, tangible training that you can actually put into your business. So I'm, I'm glad that you said the training because that's one of my favorite parts about EXP, is yeah. the collaboration and the amount of training that you can get. Exactly. Because we as agents, we don't know everything. No. You can always learn more. We can always do better and be better. And I'm glad that you mentioned Orlando because uh, EXP is a worldwide company and we're here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I, you, we have access to top agents in different markets where they use, um, they, they implement different things that we may not be aware of here in Tulsa. Right. You know, and I think that's huge. Well, I just sat down with a $700 million producer this past week out of Orlando. And of course, I've, I've, I'm sitting right in front of her. I ask her, how do I grow my team? How do I get to that $700 million in production? How did you do that? She said she's setting up a Zoom with me this week and going to tell me from systems to processes to hires to culture everything that she's done to build that organization. And as an EXP agent, you have access to the, those people sprinkled all over the United States that are just so open yeah. to help. You know, the, yeah. the, one of the differences between EXP and every other brokerage is, is we're all owners of the company. We all are owners. So the better that everybody does, the better the company does. So exactly. that's a collaborative environment. So this agent did seven hundred million dollars. Yes, twenty two hundred transactions in one year. Big whoop! <laughs> yeah, Big whoop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can do that in thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> I know seven hundred million dollars is a lot. I yeah, mean, I met another three hundred million dollar producer out of Houston, Texas, and she's going to actually come on the show. Oh, and awesome. Kind of tell everybody what she's done. I mean, that's the access that we have to to these agents. Um, so, you know, that's one of my favorite things about moving to this company. Wow. So, so Casey, I, I appreciate you coming on today. Where are we going to see you in the next five years? In the next five years, I am going to be a little bit more slim and trim. I've been working out and going to the gym. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, in all honesty, you know, in five years, I hope to um, be one of those agents, those icon agents that is te that are teaching the classes. I want to make sure that, you know, the people that come into this business have access to all the training and the, the, the tips, the hints and tricks that are available to them. I feel like there's plenty of business for everyone. Yeah. And I really like teaching. Yeah. You're good yeah. at it, Casey. You're really yeah. awesome. You're welcome. Well, well I tell you how to dress, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, Casey. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so, Casey, if agents want to reach out to you, if they want to, you know, take you to coffee or ask any questions or, you know, even talk a little bit about EXP, how will they get a hold of you? Well, they can reach me via phone or text 918-399-5959. Super easy number to remember. 
or uh, I'm on Facebook, um, Casey Kim, you know, or my website, realtorcaseykim.com. And if we do go to coffee, there are only two places in Tulsa that I like to go. So there's the bouginess. Being particular. <laughs> places. I love Nordagio's at 81st and Lewis. Super cute, quaint little place, the best coffee. And then I like Legome, which is in South Tulsa at 107th and Memorial. It is very good. I tried that for the first time a couple of weeks ago. It is very good. Yeah. Very, very, very <laughs> good. JB and I, we have a way of talking and oftentimes we'll say the dumbest things and we say very good. Or if we're sad, instead of sad, we'll be like, we're very sad. <laughs> or we'll be like, don't be mod. Be broad. <laughs> have some mango tea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you being a friend of Casey's, you always are laughing. So I'm going to encourage you to reach out to him because he is awesome and he adds a lot of laughter to my life. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on today. Um, I wish I had a full day. I do have a full day of working at the at my home office, but I am not getting an out out in this today. No, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah. So. Okay, well, thank you, Casey. I hope you guys got some good information today, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys. And just Bye. FYI, I'm only dressed professionally here. Down below, I'm wearing pajama pants. <laughs> <laughs> Work from home. <laughs>